Hi, my name is Bethan Dudley. I am a singer-songwriter from the UK, um, and I also have a cold, um, and I also have ADHD. Why did I pick today to film a video if I have a cold? Um, long story short, I've tried to film this video four times and for some reason uh, everything, well not everything, at least one thing seemed to go wrong each time I filmed a video and today I have a cold and I just, I just want this video done to be honest. <laughs> if you film a video four times you want it done regardless of what it is even if it is like a, a big topic. Also side note, um, one of the reasons why my old video didn't Three hours later. Literally feel so gross. Why am I doing this to myself? So apologies if I sound really nasal today. I'm just, yeah, just super, super ill. Anyway, so. So the other day I posted on Twitter that I was diagnosed with ADHD. I was trying not to make too much of a big thing of it. But of course, putting something like that out onto the internet, I was, um, I received an influx of questions about how I got diagnosed and how that all came about and as I only got diagnosed with ADHD uh, in the last month or so I still don't really know anything about it but what I do know is uh, how I got diagnosed because it happened. I'm also going to be referring back to my diagnostics report which I got which has been super helpful. Uh, yeah without further ado this is how I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 23 as a female in the UK. <laughs> I would say that there are five phases uh, to this diagnostic from my point of view, um, but in reality there's about three. So <laughs> phase one, uh, how I got the inkling that I maybe might have ADHD. So at some point in the beginning of 2018, I was going down the YouTube rabbit hole as one does in 2019, I don't know how I ended up there, but suddenly I came across a video from uh, How To ADHD, uh, which was about the symptoms of ADHD. And I remember watching this video just out of pure curiosity, like, hey, I don't really know anything about ADHD. Why don't I watch a video about ADHD? ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which is a terrible name, actually, because you don't have to be hyperactive to have it, and it's not like you don't have enough attention. Your attention just is all over the place. You're late on bills, you actually have the money to pay. Everything's exciting! I'm bored. Your closet looks like this. Your room looks like this. Your car looks like this. Basically was, uh, I guess to my shock, I felt like the video was describing myself better than anyone has ever been able to describe me, including myself. It was really weird and I was quite surprised. And this also led me on to another video which was about ADHD and girls. Boys often interrupt while other people are talking. Girls space out while other people are talking. What were you saying five minutes ago? Ah! Boys externalize their frustrations. Girls tend to turn pain and anger in. And I tried to push this out of my mind because immediately as soon as I thought like, hey, this really sounds like you. I wonder if you have ADHD. Bethan says to herself, I immediately felt an immense amount of guilt. I was like, you don't have ADHD. What are you talking about? Like people have this real problem like how dare you you're just whatever my entire life i've definitely felt like i was different but i guess i always just assumed um that i was quirky and then as i got older i definitely had issues with mental health but any of the kind of i guess mental health problems that were out there i looked at them and none of them ever felt like textbook for me you know i wouldn't look at any of them and go like ha huh, i have a lot of these symptoms like usually it would be that i would have a symptom or so that i could relate to maybe anxiety and depression and all these things but it never never felt like the full story when i was struggling especially coming into my early 20s um, I always assumed that maybe I wasn't struggling that much and it was just a part of being in your 20s and everybody is like messed up and to be honest I don't think that's far wrong <laughs> um, still but um, yeah there was this um, realization that uh, all of these things that were being said not only do they relate to how my life is now they really relate to how my life has always been yeah I don't know it was really odd. <laughs> I can't, I can't quite explain it. Um, and I felt guilt. I was like, no, you don't have it. Don't be silly. And I, I tried to push it out of my mind for days and days and days. And in the end, I kind of came to this kind of conclusion that like, if I'm thinking about it this much and I really did feel like 
you know, someone was describing me, then what is the harm in going to the GP and asking, right? <laughs> So then we enter phase two, which was going to see my GP. Hey, this is gonna sound crazy, but I saw this video and it, I don't know, like I felt like I could really relate to this. Like someone was talking about me and I'm quite confused. Um, what do you think? And he proceeded to ask me a bunch of questions in which I responded to. In the end, he basically said, okay, well, it sounds like it could be a possibility. I will send uh, you off for a referral. <laughs> Now, in the UK, we are absolutely blessed with the NHS. Um, it's wonderful, um, but obviously that includes a lot of long waiting periods. So the wait until my referral appointment to like an ADHD psychologist specialist um, was a year. Almost exactly a year later, I got an appointment with a senior clinical psychologist who basically sat me down and said, listen, this is the weaning out period. <laughs> Talking to one of the psychologists later on, apparently this period, they really do wean out a lot of people that don't have ADHD. So this is really a good initial um, assessment. It was actually quite short. I think it was 30 minutes to an hour, um, which, yeah, when I tell you the length of the other appointments I had, that was the short one. Yeah, it was really good. He asked me a bunch of questions, I replied to them. And then also he gave me a bunch of forms to pull out, which I gave back to him. And then he said, right, I believe that there is enough info here to suggest that you may have ADHD. So therefore you're gonna be given a, another appointment with another psychologist where you will do some more kind of, I don't know, literal tests. Phase four, so a couple of months later, I think it was about two months, two and a half months, something like that, um, I got my next appointment. This appointment was around two hours long. This was with another clinical psychologist. Anyway, so then we did uh, a bunch of different tests. The tests were super, super odd. I think in total we did five tests, and I think two of them I did really well on. One of them I did well on, but not for my age, and then the other two I think I did badly on. One of them was you had to keep uh, track of what floor the lift was on. Another one was uh, lottery numbers where basically you would have two letters and three numbers. Um, you were told to keep track of say, I don't know, any lottery number that ended with the numbers 62. And when that would come up, you would have to write down the first two letters. They would play a series of lottery numbers and beeps over the course of about 10, 15 minutes and you would have to write down the letters. And of course, was that I, <laughs> I walked into that ADHD assessment thinking like, no, I'm probably just like somebody that has the symptoms and I'm like overreacting and everything's fine. And, and I did the first two tests really well and I was really like happy. And then as it all started to go downhill and I did so badly on that lottery one, I was like, wow. I even remember saying to the psychologist, I was like, surely even like normal people do badly on this, right? Like not just people that have ADHD because that is ridiculous. Like it was so impossible for me to stay focused. I don't, I, I just didn't understand in the slightest how, yeah, anyway. So anyway, I got to the end of that two hour assessment and then I was put forward for my final assessment, which would be with uh, a senior counseling psychologist. We basically had a two hour long chat, my background, um, how I was in school, the list goes on. On top of this, I did a self-assessment where I ticked boxes for how I was as a child and how I am now. My dad ticked uh, boxes and wrote things down related to my childhood and how I was as a child. After the end of that two hour appointment, they said that because one of my previous psychologists was on holiday, they didn't have all my paperwork, but as soon as they had my paperwork, they would call me up with their final diagnosis. At this point, all signs were pointing basically to ADHD, but I was really curious to see what my diagnostic assessment report would be like, which by the way, took me a long time to read because it's quite heavy and it's also, it's quite intense because they literally write down everything that you say. <laughs> and like, imagine like talking for two hours. I just get really stressed out, like the walls are listening. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry if the papers are really um, annoying. I, 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 
Ah. So I was given a DSM-5 diagnosis of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder combined type. And combined, as far as I'm aware, is the most common version of ADHD, type of ADHD. Kind of hard to explain how ADHD I am, but I was more ADHD than I thought I was basically my general ADHD observations. Substantial uh, difficulties with attention slash distractibility and speech quality, which is quite funny for somebody that has a YouTube channel and also presented for four music. Um, but you know, we're struggling behind the edits. Moderate in restlessness, uh, fidgeting, concentration, forgetfulness, impulsivity, coping with silence, and typical presentation of ADHD in organization discuss. Reading all of the things that they've written about me that they've um, kind of observed. This is one of my favorite things that they wrote down. Although you appear to show several difficulties which often are indicative of ADHD, you demonstrated some strategies such as a sense of humor which perhaps help to mitigate this in social situations. I mean, yeah, what else are you gonna do? Come on now. <laughs> Basically, it's a long ass assessment. In terms of how I feel about diagnosis, something that I listened to on a video about somebody that got diagnosed with ADHD is that you are gaining uh, not necessarily a solution, but an answer to the difficulties that you've been having and why you are the way that you are. Um, whereas for everyone else, you're kind of gaining a condition. <laughs> kind of more negative, even though it's really positive for me. I'm a little bit in limbo right now, so I haven't been able to really think so much about it. I got this diagnosis right before she came out, um, so I haven't really stopped until about now to kind of process the whole thing. What I have personally been offered is I've been referred to a nurse at like an ADHD, like mental health clinic um, to have an appointment to basically discuss options um, of medication. Unfortunately, the wait time for this appointment is three to five months, so now probably two to four months. In terms of where I stand um, in medication and generally all treatments um, for ADHD is that I am keeping my options open. I think there is so much stigma around taking medication for mental health issues, etc. And I, there are so many people out there that are for and against it, but at the end of the day, I think it's whoever is dealing with said problem or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, they should be the ones that are able to make that decision. Since getting my ADHD diagnosis, before even talking really about medication, so many people were like, ah, oh, you shouldn't take it, don't take this, don't take that. I find it absolutely baffling that we are still in this place in 2019 where we think that every drug works for every person or every drug doesn't work for every person, if that makes sense. We are all different. Things affect us in different ways. The same goes for contraceptive pills. The same goes for ADHD medication, antidepressants. Um, the list goes on. I really do want people to talk about their experiences in the comments, but instead of maybe saying, don't take this or do take this, maybe just say, I've had a good experience with this or I personally had a bad experience with this because we shouldn't like be mad at people for like wanting to take their medication or at least try the medication that they've been prescribed. I think it's important that everyone does their own research. I personally do that whenever I'm taking any kind of drug, uh, whether that's antibiotics. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just hyper aware of the things that I put in my body. Yeah, for me personally, I am really open in that respect. Um, but equally, I've already heard that there are different types of medication, different doses, and that some people have had ADHD medication and it's changed their life. Some people, it has done absolutely nothing for them. And then there's a lot of people in the middle where it does help them sometimes, but also there are a lot of side effects and maybe they can't take it all the time. Um, that is probably the most common one that I have heard. <laughs> and in terms of any other treatment that I have been offered, I was offered referral to a six week course. I think we meet once a week and uh, it's an opportunity to learn more about my ADHD in a group setting. And then also there's like a monthly support group in my area for people with ADHD that I could attend to if I wanted to. 
but we'll see. I don't know if it's like group therapy. I don't know if that's for me, but we'll see. Um, again, I said I was open. Um, and also I was given a reading list, which is quite extensive that I'm gonna start um, going through now. But yeah, I mean, it takes me forever to read a book, but I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> uh, this whole experience has been very, very weird. Generally over the last couple of years, I've experienced a lot of growth anyway. Um, I started implementing kind of ADHD strategies into my life. Um, as soon as I learned about ADHD, um, because why not try it if it works for you? Fantastic. This involves like strategies on how to keep your place tidy and how to stay on top of tasks and da 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 and give yourself breaks and not get distracted and basically how to hack ADHD a little bit, which is a lot harder than it sounds. Um, <laughs> what else? I feel like I've forgotten everything that I was gonna say. If you wanna know more about ADHD symptoms, uh, ADHD and goals, because I think goals are generally underdiagnosed because it's quite, um, I don't know, I don't wanna say a boy issue, but generally there was a time apparently where ADHD was thought to be a boy issue, not a girl issue. And also I don't think I've ever actually seen somebody on film or TV that has ADHD that is a girl, but I've seen plenty of representations of boy characters that have ADHD. If you know of any, please let me know. I think this is the big thing about, I don't know, stereotypes, textbook. My idea of what ADHD was completely different to what ADHD actually is, which is why I never thought that I had it. Generally, I think the reason why nobody thought that I had ADHD or that I got away with it for so many years is because I was really passionate about performing arts and music and those things could keep my attention for a really really long time. However, I was chatty and disruptive and could apply herself more. I mean, I managed to get through my GCSEs with pretty good grades without revising once. And so therefore it does not surprise me in the slightest that nobody noticed that I have ADHD. Honestly, none of this is a surprise to me whatsoever. In terms of kind of where I go from here, um, it's all a bit of a mystery at the moment. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, keep going to therapy, keep trying to remain on top of my life and manage my brain the best I can. Yeah, if I can learn any tips and tricks along the way or find things that help me, then fantastic because uh, I feel like a diagnosis is at least one step towards doing that, which is great. Let me know in the comments if you have ADHD and what you do to help it and what you have found on your ADHD journey, I guess. If anybody has any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I probably don't have any of the answers, um, but someone else might, and I hope that it can be a safe place for everyone to ask questions and respect everybody's life choices in terms of whether they are medicated or not. ADHD is absolutely a toughie to navigate, so any help is, is appreciated. I'm just hoping for a positive step forward and hopefully not two steps back when I don't know, when I go through the next kind of phase. Everything itches, I need to go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, yeah, hope it was helpful. Thanks so much, bye.